Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. A decision, deliberate decision, by Kenya Kwanza Top Portfolio to isolate um, other leaders and intentionally drop the power sharing deal is the cause of what has been treated as Azimila Omoje's protest against four cabinet nominees. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. I followed the nominees vetting in the National Assembly, and to some extent, I uh, quite a number of Kenyans criticized the process that it will not yield any fruit if there is deep, there is no deep scrutiny that is going to be done on some of those cabinet nominees that in the public space people believe should not even hold any office. And one thing that I realized there is that Kenya Kwanzaa uh, members of that uh, committee, some of them were so little, especially Kimani Chungwa. I remember the direct confrontation with the Njuguna who was um, nominated to head to Treasury. And so someone kept on asking, is it in the face of fairness or there is happening? Behind the scene, I can say without fear of contradiction that that process is infiltrated. But let's hold it there and mention this. Mithika Linturi, who was uh, nominated to head agricultural docket in the cabinet, came in with a blood, uh, bloody uh, garbage, uh, bloody 35 cases, civil cases, that are filed against him in different <laughs> courts. So even if I, I have seen a conversation by Boni Halwari asking why the MPs are actually probing or are demanding to know on the fate of those cases. But 35, isn't 35 not just too much to be ignored? <laughs> Isn't that five not too much to be ignored? On the other end, Aisha Jumwa also was coming in the backdrop of two cases. Criminal case that involved a killing of a fan, of, of a supporter in Ganzi. And uh, a corruption case, but even though it was dropped by DPP before she even faced that panel. Now, I have seen um, what the committee is uh, has now played out. We need to mention that after the vetting, the report, uh, the committee is supposed to table a report for a plenary discussion in the National Assembly. Then from there, and that report is going to be tabled by the speaker. Then from there, um, the report, the recommendations, the ones that are passed, are going to be sent, their names are going to be sent to the president. They will sign and then they will be sworn in. So today, a report is supposed to be tabled. And according to what is emerging, um, they are saying that Azimula Umoja have singled out, I think now, I think there are five um, cabinet nominees that they feel should not be uh, allowed to head to the cabinet. This include Moses Kuria, Aish, who was uh, nominated to head gender and public affairs, uh, not, not Moses Kuria, Aisha Jumwa, gender and public affairs, Moses Kuria, trade and interest, trade I think and something, the industrialization. Uh, we also have Benine Malonza, was nominated to head uh, tourism, and Mithika Linturi, who was dominated to head agriculture. So let's look at what each one of them has been put among each of them. Linturi is blamed that he clearly explained, failed to explain how he would transform the agriculture docket. Two key questions MPs answered, uh, failed to answer, was how GMO crops 
would benefit farmers and how his manifesto aligned with the Kenya Kwanzaa agendas. In my next analysis, I have a, a, an analysis that is going to touch on that a bit, so I want to keep it hold. Aisha Jum, on the other hand, is facing murder charges. Even though the family had decided that the case be held, uh, be, uh, less, uh, be had out of court, Moses Kuria is also being rejected on his past conduct of showing disrespect during the campaign period. And of course, he has been um, guest of the courts for quite some time because of facing hate speech and all that. Now, from the media report, this has been reported as an Azimio protest, as the voice of Azimio after the process completed. And I think also the land CS has also been, uh, Azimio also rejecting him on the grounds that he is incompetent. But the invincible issue here is that lobbying efforts were unproductive. It's just about the lobbying efforts. So when uh, as Speaker Wetangula Tables is reporting the parliament, Azimila Omoja are also uh, MPs who are members of that, are also planning, are devoted to, to, to table a parallel report in the floor of house, the floor of the house. And um, and maybe in their report, they will reject the other cabinet to this. So we, we, we are going to witness this uh, drama as it will unfold in the National Assembly. And I want to hold it and say this. The secret thing here is that William Ruto's deep state team is stranded. And this rejection that has been reported as a meal may not be it. In my view, William Ruto is trying to review power sharing deal. That's it. This can be treated as an Azimio protest and all that, but you'll just sit down and ask, what was the criterion of singling these other four? If it was a political protest, because other people say that Azimio playing politics, if it was about playing politics, I can tell you, that Azimio would have gone for William Ruto's nominees from Rift Valley. So Ipantuya, they've gone for Florence Bore, the former women rep, women rep of Kericho, the former women rep of, of Narok. They would have gone for that team. But strategically, the names that they have, and I'm not saying that all of them are, are fine, even no, all those people, all those cabinet nominees, here and there, here and there. But the criterion of narrowing down to the four could have been informed by a deep plot by William Ruto's deep state to review what has caused a lot of jitters from the Kenya Kwanza camp, and that is why the president disobeyed the power sharing deal that's it <laughs> we uh, that that to me is where i look at it and i also don't want to um uh, to, to, to dismiss the fact that any attempt by azmir to reject might also be a west a welcome call to the president it will also be a very good fodder to the president because this creates a destructive narrative as Ruto prepares to account for first 100 days in office. If that interview will be done, this happens, William, William Samuel Ruto will actually tell the Kenyans that Azmir has been distracting them in the National Assembly, even their cabinet is not yet complete, and that's why they cannot account for what they have done for the first 100 days conclusively. <clears throat> These are all political um, 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 tokens that are actually available. The power sharing document, or rather the power sharing structure, now is emerging because of some few issues. And, and you must look at it that we are in a place where uh, the, the William Ruto's um, um, cabinet was largely cronism political loyalty. It was rewarding that political loyalty to the expense of um, integrity. And in fact, 
intention to nominate is already enough to show that I mean well, then maybe you've just failed. No, for now, if anyone is going to be rejected, and even though I don't see that coming, William Bruto shall already have done his part saying that I showed my intention, but maybe because of you guys, you could not get make your way to the cabinet. This is coming at a time when there is one well deliberate strategy known as Kalonzo capture. The president, William Ruto, have confirmed that more than once he has met Kalonzo Musioka and has tried to convince Kalonzo to join government, even though he's saying that Kalonzo refused. And I, I, I never buy that. Maybe he refused or so. Those talks are not yet over. And he said that he's still going to continue talking to him until when Kalonzo will accept to come and join him. He badly needs Kalonzo in his side to manage 2027. So what I see here is Ruto might actually review the cabinet names and use this behind the scene plot and use this avenue to make this nominees being vulnerable in the National Assembly and in the view of public outcry, maybe serve a Kalonzo capture interest. Penina Malonza is being rejected. And I think if there is one that is quite unfair is that of Penina Malonza. It's 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 open secret that I don't think it's she she which is not highly volatile in terms of politics. And they're talking about incompetence and so which which is fine. But do you know in Ukambani they have two cabinet nominees, that Panina Malonza from Kitui and uh, the former Machakos governor Alfred Mutua, while there are some places that do not have. So Kalonzo Musioka's bait, capture bait, is critical to William Ruto's power sharing deal and he trying to play games. But then, what happened to Musanya Mudafadi and Moses Wetangula's 30% pledge? What happened? What happened? And Wetapula is now sitting in the National Assembly. Um, it's open secret that Ruto and Gashago, if, if by any chance Gashago was involved, they had picked, they had picked the cabinet. I don't see any input there by Musali and Nevari. I am not seeing any. Could be this 30% U-turn, and it's U-turn because someone maybe did not bring something tangible on the ballot on the election day, is also causing jitters. And the president may make, make some review and karabatis here and there to accommodate even other people. This is largely possible. Because the truth of the matter, guys, is also the regional balance was not met. And I just want to single out these two. Mount Kenya was overrepresented. Moses Kuria, uh, Mithika Linturi, uh, Justin Muturi, um, Alice Wahome. Uh, those are five. There was uh, that one from Energy, six. They have a deputy president, seven. Njuguna, eight. Out of 22, almost eight, I think nearly nine are from Mount Kenya. Even, even I think uh, there is someone who is a member of um, someone from some high portfolio there from Mount Kenya. They were overrepresented and that could be causing a problem because look at Jumwa. Amazon King is from Kilifi. He's been giving Speaker Senate. I heard Jumwa has been from Kilifi, a cabinet slot. Mombasa do not have anything. So even if you are serving cost, does it really work? And look at uh, um, look at Northeastern. Are they not? Look at Luo Nyanza. Walo. So that issue of imbalance is actually playing out. Kamba have two. Mutua and Malonza. While there are some places that don't have any. What would stop William Ruto from denying Malonza that uh, tourism post and give it to one man that I believe was mistakenly left out, Hassan Omar. He really went against ODM Tide in Mombasa. 
but he seems to have been left out. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my bold analysis, and my position is about power sharing. I don't know what to think. Whatever is being treated as an Azmi affair is a goose that was cooked by the real men behind power.